Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of Everything You Love. I'm Rob Arnold, and on today's episode, I'd like to share with you my recent conversation with the world-renowned drummer, Kevin Talley. Kevin is a drum mercenary of sorts and has played with a, a ton of super successful metal and death metal bands over the years um, and was definitely like the go-to guy when a band was in a pinch and needed a guy who could get the job done with little to no notice. Um, Kevin and I have always had a, a really close relationship and we got along together really well during his time in the band which began back in 2004 when um, he joined Chimera after Andals, Herrick, left the band, you know, for, for personal reasons. Um, Kev helped us create our 2005 self-titled record, which is personally my favorite Camaro record, and we talk about that and share memories from the creation of that album at uh, great length in this video. Over the years, we've always kept in touch and would see each other from time to time when we would come through town, and our most recent album collaboration, Six Feet Under's 2011 Undead record, uh, is another personal favorite of mine and a record that I'm extremely proud of from top to bottom. Um, there's a lot of knowledge to be gained from Kev, and if you stick around for this conversation, you're going to hear a ton from him about tempo and groove and feel, when to play fast, when to play slow, songwriting, stuff like that. Um, he has this in incredible musical perspective, uh, like in the heavy metal realm, that I've always appreciated, respected, and admired. Um, he's also a, just a hard-hitting like aggressive, detail-oriented drummer um, that I think is awesome, man. And, and those are those are qualities being dedicated to his craft um, and just having a real passion for it. The qualities that that I look for in any musician that that I jam with. So um, had a lot of fun putting this together. And uh, if you're ready, please enjoy my conversation with the great drummer Kevin Talley. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. You, you got it going. I still have your stage shirt. Wait, whoa, that's a tribal gear shirt. Yes, <laughs> nice, dude. That's awesome. I forgot you were a, you were a, a, a tribal sporter as well for all those years. Dang, six feet under shirt. I know. I found I found. I found in that band. I know, I, dude. That we we got to talk about that. We got a lot to talk about. First of all, how have you been? Excellent. Excellent. I like to hear that. You're a father? Yeah. Yeah, it's so awesome. Uh, where are you right now? San Antonio? Or yeah. Is that the city? Okay, so you're back in San Antonio. You're flipping houses? Yeah. Are you in a flip right now or are you at home? No, I'm at home right now. Or did you flip yeah. your own home? Or, you know, I mean, fix no. it up. I mean, buy, buy fix it no, up. Or, or, no. it's, a, it's a new house, so there's no reason to, like, start messing with it. Well, good. You got your uh, kid at the uh, at the house at all? You still playing at all? What do you? I, I haven't seen you doing much lately or anything. Have you? I I've been doing a lot of studio work, but um, you know, I just I got my 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 studio kind of like down the street, and um, I just do studio work. And I I don't know if anybody like, you know, everybody's trying to pu publicize everything. So you know, unless you're looking out for, you know, when people post things like you know. This is my new song featuring Kevin Talley. I mean, I don't know how right. How, right. how hard that is to find, or you know. But a lot of people call on your services just for like tours and stuff. Have you been doing any of that? Because here's here's the what I what I so so people know. And my, my like what I, what I think of you is that like what you're used to is you're you're, you're not playing any really any drums much. You're just kind of doing your thing. You're not even thinking about drums. Then you get a call, and it'll be like <laughs> uh, let, me just, let me just throw out a band. Uh, I don't know some. White Chapel will call you and be like, Kev, hey, wh what are you doing? And you're like, oh man, <laughs> just stop living out. Ooh, okay, cool. Um, well, we're gonna pinch here, and how would you feel about uh, learning 17 songs and meeting us in Belgium the day after tomorrow? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Those are the calls you're used well, to, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there there's very few bands that I would that I would work for now because like I don't really want to go on tour. And, um, you know, um, I, I don't, I, I just, you know, I don't really want to leave my kid and, right. and you're do comfortable that, doing but, what but you're I doing. Will, I will for a short amount of time, 
if um if it's for a band that that I love. Right. So if if Chimera was like, hey, let's play, let's play a a, a few shows. Yeah. I'd be like, okay. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Dying fetus, suffocation, six feet under. Yeah. Um, you know, just just like bands that I've already played for that I was in. You right. know, the bands that that I wasn't really in that I was just helping out. Then uh, maybe, but it would have to be like you know a weekend or something like that. I did play some shows with Diabetes, uh, and it was just like that. Yeah. And um, so they're in like Atlanta or something. And then John Gallagher calls me. He's like, "Hey, Kev, yeah. what are you doing?" Yeah. I'm like, "Nothing." He's like, "Well, you know." Um, Trey had a family emergency, so we're going to be in Houston in a couple of days. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm coming to the show. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, bring your sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, do you think you can play the songs? I'm like, oh, my God. The hardest, the hardest one. Harder than Hate Eternal. I was just going to ask, what's harder, Hate Eternal or, or Fetus? Yeah. Because because the thing that's that's – Hard and Cattle Decap and Red Cord, those all all three of those bands were pretty dang hard. The easier bands are like Hate Eternal, Black Dahlia, the stuff that's like just straight through, no tempo changes. You know, I'm talking about to fill in for, you know, because yeah. you gotta know the tempos. Yeah. You know, if your guitar player is like ready to go from 220 BPM to 175 BPM, then you gotta know. Like you got to nail it, you know. You can't be like fucking up, or or your guitar player is gonna play at 175 and you're gonna play at 185, yeah. and then it, it, there's gonna be like a hiccup. And yeah. if you got two guitar players, then it's gonna be muddy if the guitars aren't perfectly synced up. You're gonna get you know, a lot of head turns gonna, looking at you. You know what's going on. Yeah. And you, you don't, yeah, you don't want that. You want the, everybody to feel comfortable. You know when you're filling in yeah. for them. So, yeah. so 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 anyway, it's those bands that change tempos a lot that are that are more difficult to to nail like right. on a fill in situation. Right. So so um man, Fetus and and there was there was a lot of hard shit. It, it, it there's a lot of hard shit in the Fetus song. So anyway, I was like, hey John, let me call you back in forty five minutes. <laughs> and when let you... me sit down let me sit down and see if I can play okay. some songs. So that's what you did in that forty five minutes. You actually sat down and tried to play them. I sat down and I tried. I, I and I told him. I said, "We got to play all my songs, and we can play like two or three new songs that that we know that are you guys are are staples. You know, like the new song that's out for your new album, and like a, you know, because it's been freaking since 2001 since I was in that band. So obviously, there's been a shit ton of songs, you know, since. But we did. We played a lot of old songs uh, that I was on, and then uh, we played two or three new songs." And, um, man, I showed up it, and, and it wouldn't even be like, you know how if I just showed up at a Chimera show, like think about how long it's been since I was in Chimera. Yeah. It was longer than that for Fetus. Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you were playing with them before Chimera. Yeah, yeah for one. So, so that's how it would be. Like if I showed up and I was like, okay, let's play everything you love and – Nothing remains. No yeah. big deal. Yeah. We pra- We played about five or six songs at Soundcheck, and then we played fucking twelve songs at, How'd at it go? the show. How'd it go? We. It was awesome. Great. Great. It, it was awesome. <laughs> I couldn't even believe it. And I told him, I said, "Listen, the songs are going to be a little bit slow. They're going to be like kind of more how the album is because Trey plays a little bit faster. You know, mm-hmm. everybody likes." After a while, you just start playing faster than the albums and right. stuff. And, but um, I was like, listen, uh, you know, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> I told him that. I was like, listen, I'm a little rusty, so I'm going to play more like the album speed and, uh, you know, just be ready to play a little bit slower than uh, than you have been. So he was like, yeah, sure, no problem. As long as we're tight and we get through the songs and we don't stop, that's all that really matters. Right. So it was sick. It was real sick. Good. And I had them out in my monitor so that I could – really listen to them to make sure I was playing the correct tempos and stuff. Cause I can hear, you know, if, if he's re- if he wants, I told him, I said, if you want to go a little faster, unfortunately they're just a one guitar band. 
I said, if you want me to go a little faster, then just rush me a little bit. And I'll yeah. hear it. Yeah. yeah. How, how, how did how did your endurance hold up just jumping into a super demanding set like that? Well, after not playing like in a live setting for like three years. Yeah. It it was um it was easy. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs> I knew it'd be. I knew because it'd be. You're an animal. It, do you remember that Chimera Christmas? Like it was not the year where we played two different nights. It was the one where we played at the Agora yeah. one long night and yeah. I had the flu. We we debuted Nothing Remains at that show, I remember. I didn't know you I can't I didn't remember you had the flu. Dude, but, remember remember maybe you'll remember the practice the day before. The practice the day before, I tried to we tried to practice and I I got through like half of the song and I said, I can't practice. I, 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 I didn't, remember didn't that. practice. Oh, did man. not even practice. Well, another thing I remember from that show, which was cool, when because I, I specifically remember Dave you Nothing Remains because the guys from STEM, remember TJ's old band STEM? They were up in a yeah. balcony. You know what I'm going to say? No. no they, they were up in a balcony, and they told me after the show, oh, that new song was awesome. And you know how... So that was your idea to do the, um, you know, you know, to switch to switch to switch the snare like uh, from the the one to the two or whatever in each part, uh, or you know what I'm saying. So anyways, um, anyways, they told me after the show that they thought they thought they 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 were like, oh, Camira messed up. They thought we messed up, and then when they heard it come back, they were like, oh, that's sick, you know, like so yeah. I thought I thought that was cool, you know. I remember being in the jam space and 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 telling you guys like. Just keep playing the exact same thing. Yeah. Just keep, don't listen to me. You okay. Know? <laughs> okay. I, I, I probably argued it at first too. Like, no, I don't think so. But in, of course it was the right choice, <laughs> you know, but oh, let's get right into that. I wanted to talk about just like kind of starting from the beginning of like, um, what it was like showing up, what you remember from the first day jamming and stuff. But uh, actually that reminds me of just a little bit of history. Like when, when Andals had told us he was going to be leaving the band, Mark actually called Kerry King and asked for a recommendation, and he recommended this guy Kevin Telly that had just came and, re and, and rehearsed with them, or uh, tried out for them to replace Dave Lombardo, but they ended up going with somebody that was more their age, which was Bo Steff, right? Or no, or Bo Steff ended up coming back, right? Or, I, I, or, I gotta remember. <laughs> no, Bo Steff got kicked out of the band. Okay. And Dave Lombardo was temporarily filling in, going around on tours, so I auditioned when they were on tour, and then I got invited to their rehearsal space. So I, I played with them on Dave Lombardo's kit, and then Dave said, hey guys, I'm just gonna rejoin permanently. Because at first, that's he right. was like, I just, that's right. I'll just fill in. Yeah, so that's when Dave came back, and he did like Roll Painted Blood, and, and Christ Illusion and stuff. And then and then Bostaff came back, you know, five years ago or whenever it yeah. was. Yeah, that's okay, right. Okay, so, so it's just like you were saying earlier, like. I just imagine that you're just going about your day and you just get a weird random call. So I'm on the ladder at work, like I was do, like doing like pulling some wires for this electrical company. Okay. And uh, and I'm like I see a weird number and I'm like okay you know and I'm like hello and it, hey come hey man it's Curry how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like typical call you get all the time I'm right? I'm like hey. Hey man, what's going? I mean, what's going on? Yeah, cool. Kerry King's calling me up. That's pretty sick. <laughs> he's like, yeah. he's like, uh, you know, Camara uh, is looking for a drummer, man. Uh, and I figured you'd be kind of a perfect fit for him. What do you think? And I was like, sick. He's like, uh, okay, is it cool if I pass him your phone number? And I was like, sounds sick. Thanks, man. So that was it. He, yeah, he he gave him, uh, you know. My number, That's awesome. and uh, I'll call me up, and I was like, uh, I can't really remember. I was like, all right, yeah, I'll come, I'll come jam with you guys, or there's a tour. Yeah, I do remember this. I got into the rehearsal space. It was the smaller one. Remember we yeah, were in the we were upstairs one before for... before here, which was this was our spot before I turned it into the studio. Yeah, yeah but That's we were in the right. smaller spot upstairs, there. which a lot of people I... could see in the dehumanizing process DVD, where. Because uh, that's where we were still at in that time when you first joined. Before we moved down here, we moved down here right after you joined the band, I think. Yeah. So, um, so, I we were we were jamming the songs, and then I can't remember. I guess it was like 
was it Jim or yeah. or maybe some other guys came in and I like pretended to like fuck up really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim was on his <laughs> so it's just me and you. You got there, you arrived, you had some famous gyro George. You remember and like and like this is a oh, seedy yeah. area and you had just got it right down the street. I'm like, oh whoa, you stopped there? You shouldn't eat there. And you're like, what? It's fine, you know, or something. But you didn't know, but, <laughs> but I'm sure it was fine. Anyways, yeah. So we jammed a couple tunes or whatever, and then we tried to play a joke on Jim. Like Jim was going to arrive, and you're like, hey, I'm just let's play Severed, and I'm just going to totally fuck it up. So what you did, and I remember. Yeah. So we playing it, and you're just you're just sucking hard, and Jim kind of just looking at me out of the corner, and I'm just, uh, like, uh, we we actually hired this guy or something, you know? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so no, and then and then you turned it around and tore it up, and that was awesome, you know. Yeah. So you, I remember you telling me early on that you came in with a vision, like you knew you wanted to make some changes to the band, like in terms of I don't know if it was well, tempo or or ferocity or something like that. What what, what were your thoughts? Yeah, well, I mean, it was basically because um, I had been watching a lot of videos or listening to sound bites w with with Ricky in the band, mm. and and he was playing the songs like a lot faster, and like the groove wasn't there as much. Maybe if you're if you were like, you know, I don't know. I just I just felt like it needed to be brought down more of like the album speed, maybe a little faster than the album speed, but not like super fast so we were know, just tearing through them live yeah, super it was fast, just, yeah. sometimes if if if, the, if you're going too fast then the then the groove's not there exactly yeah you know? and actually you can hear that like even sometimes on pantera live videos you'll you'll hear like how maybe they were going a little too fast but, I, uh, I could say that about metallica too and that's something you yeah. said to me that i've always kept in mind and i totally yeah. agree with parts that that you know jam real hard on the record sometimes lose some of that how hard they hit if you're playing them too fast you're not yeah. sticking to that tempo the people used yeah. to hear. So anyway, I just I wanted to bring things back down to like um, the album speeds for you know a little closer so that it would be uh, and then if we wanted to pick things up or slow things down from there, we, I just wanted to have like a a level playing field you know for a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So it was basically just tempo stuff. You didn't have like like songwriting ideas in mind that you, that you wanted to bring oh. or, or something, or, or was it just basically a, you, you knew you had to fix this tempo wise? Is that what you were thinking? Or? Oh no, I was just I was just thinking like when we first started jamming together. Yeah, um, I knew that when we started writing, I knew that we that I wanted to incorporate some different tempos because yeah. the impossibility of reason was all like very much like one seventy to two hundred. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even one, yeah, probably like maybe even 180 to yeah. 190. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I agree with that. And uh, I knew that I just wanted some stuff like, um, trying to think of some songs that we wrote, like what the, the song titles were. Da, da, pa, 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 like this. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, you know, just like just some different feels. That's a, and everything you love. For sure. A little, little different tempo. Bloodlust, I think you're just dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah, that's Bloodlust, yeah. And the first one you said was, was yeah. The first one you said was uh Save Ourselves, I think. Dun 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 Yeah. Yeah, definitely some different feels on there. So so do you think that do we do a couple tours, like finishing up the impossibility cycle and then start working on self titled? Yeah. Yeah. So when we first started working on self-title, I, I I think back at that time period is so fun. Um, like just yeah. just writing in, in there. A lot of the time, I think it was you, me, Matt, really? and Jim. Really, you know. Yeah. Um, but that was that was fun. Just coming up with those tunes. Yeah. And then, Remember, I lived I lived there for a while. At the at the practice oh, yeah. space. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Then there's a there's a cabinet shop next door, and, and Chuck would be yeah. sawing all night. And he said that at four o'clock in the morning, he'd still be sawing and stuff, like that. <laughs> yeah. and trying to I was sleep. Just gonna bring that up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's um, but yeah, man, we had we had fun writing those, and uh, I just I just found a CD uh, that says like you know um, Captain Lou Albano and and uh, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Jake the Snake, stuff like that. All our working titles for the for the album songs uh, were all wrestler names, whatever, we as we were writing before they had real names. Remember that? Did you listen to it? No, but I should. Uh, I've, you got, should. I've, I've got it sitting over there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because I I think I might have mentioned this before, but um, in, in past, but you brought like kind of the ability to record our jams to the to the. Yeah. To the band we never like were able to record into a computer before that but you're like yeah I just i'll just set it up we can record and i remember i would going back to to my condo afterwards and listening to this stuff and being like whoa this stuff's gonna be awesome you know never i never <laughs> i never like heard 
the recordings straight from our, the jams that in that good of quality right. right when you get home, you know. So yeah. that was that was a cool new thing, and that was so that would have been an 05, 04, 05, something like that. Dude, I remember being in Fetus, and I and I would have like a little boombox with a tape, and I would hit record, you know, with the, on yeah. a tape player. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's blown out from way too loud. Yeah, and they yeah. To it, yeah. I would, I would, I would put a bunch of tape and like try to put as much tape and muffling as possible on the little little hole. <laughs> it would still sound terrible, but I still have some of those tapes. Yeah. Hey, well, you got to you got to do what you got to do back then. Yeah. Well, back then, you know, we weren't recording to. Uh, we we didn't even use a click track at all. Right. You know. So so we I would just I was listening to just see what the feel was you know because when you're playing something you don't really necessarily know how fast or how slow or what it sounds like you know just listening to it mm -hmm. you know yeah but uh i mean maybe for a guitar player that's easier but but for a drummer it's like i mean once a song is written and all and all that stuff then you know like what you're doing but if you're writing something you know and it's like you know if it's like you know, it's just it's better to, to be able to listen to something. You yeah, know? for sure. You could say, then you could say, hey, we should do it a little quicker, a little slower. You know, that's something that that people writing nowadays don't even have to think about. I feel like nobody even sits across from their guitar player to write a song now. Ah, really? I've been talking a lot about this lately in in, uh, in in a lot of my prior shows here that uh, that I think that element is missing from from writing today, especially in metal and stuff like that. Just playing with, yeah. your, with your guys and the stuff we came up with just by stumbling upon it and being like, oh, let's try this, yeah. let's try this stuff that would, could just never really happen in a computer with one mind. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you know, well, just, remember when we did the, the Six Feet Under songs, um, I would I would write out my parts on the drum machine. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And then when we went to go jam the songs, I would change it. I'd be like, man, I was sure that I wanted that to go like that. And then when I actually just sat down and wanted to play it, I'm like, no, that's wrong. And then yeah. I changed the drum parts. A perfect example of that is when guitar players write drum stuff and then drummers sit down, to, which happens all the time in almost every record that's coming out nowadays, is the guitar player is writing these drum notes or whatever. And when an actual drummer sits down to play the stuff or here's what you have to play so we can make this video. And yeah, you have to play it like I, like I did it, you know, just so it looks real yeah. in the video and stuff. I, I know that drummers are like, dude, but this isn't what a drummer would really play here. You know, right. it's just so awkward or whatever, you know, to play what, what the guitar player thought of I should play here when this could be so much better if I just did this. And that's missing a, a big part of what's missing, I think, yeah. is what a drummer yeah. would actually play there and what you guys, how you guys came up filling in that, that, that backbone in the beat for music or whatever that we yeah. didn't, as guitar players didn't have to think about then, but we do yeah. now just because we that's why that That's why drummers that are s sitting across from guitar players writing a heavy metal song should get some publishing. You, uh, I yeah. agree. I yeah. agree. Everybody gets their, you know, well, at least in Khmer, everybody got their, uh, their, yeah. pu their publishing uh, royalties. Now the writer credits, that's just such a gray area, I think, you know, for, uh, yeah. for everything, you know, like this, which is why s since the beginning, I know this is easier said than done and everybody can do it, but I think that the, that the best thing is just an equal split as long as everybody pulls their weight. If everybody's creatively pulling their weight and everything else, then why not, yeah. just, why not just an equal split to make everybody happy and feel a part of it yeah. and stuff. But again, that's just the perfect world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It only worked in Khmer for so long, you know, and then if somebody isn't pulling their weight, then all of a sudden people start butting heads. And I think that's how it is. Uh, <gasps> <happens, you know? laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Like my throat. Hey, well, okay. So thinking back though, in, in now, now, uh, what, uh, almost 15 years later or whatever, what are your thoughts on the self-titled record? In, in terms yeah. of your, your whole catalog, everything, how does it rank for you? I mean, you don't have to put out a number or anything, but how do you feel about it and, and just, just in your legacy, the Kevin Talbot legacy with everything you've been a part of over the years? Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, it's cool. I wish we could have made more albums together, but... I, I, I agree. Yeah, well, you and I what did. About that? What about that song we're working on? Yeah, the Swamp Thing. <laughs> yeah. No, we got to do that. Uh, the, for, for everybody, um, years ago, you came into town, I, think, I guess that was probably like 2013 or whatever, and you gave me some drum tracks, and I got to write some guitars over it, which was a cool thing for me. Usually, I write guitar tracks and somebody plays drums to it or whatever, you know? So I just this was a song that you had just put together, and I got to play a guitar over it, and it's just been kind of sitting dormant for a long time. I still want to do something with it. Um, yeah. You know? All or, right. Now, now that, now that um, I really feel I'm about to have time... We'll we'll do something with it. 
All right. Well, good. We'll do something awesome. All right. Well, yeah, just as long as it's awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that'd be cool. I'd love to. I'd love to uh, do a few more songs. You know. So yeah. We'll put a little. Put a little we'll something just... together. A little. A little side job. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then a few years later, we did get to do another record together. Um, the the Six Feet Under Undead record. What are your What are your memories of that? Like, wow. first of all, how were you even contacted for that one? Was it me or did Chris Barnes contact you or? No, I think, uh, I think, gosh, I really, I really don't remember. I, I remember, I think, getting you in the band. I think, right? No, no, definitely. Or you when, got when, me when, in Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I started talking to him, you know, he, he mentioned, he's like, do you have any drummers in mind? And I said, Kevin, I specifically remember him saying, oh, you kept, kept tell you think he'd do it? As if like he wouldn't, or, as if he wouldn't or something. I'm like, yeah, I think he would, you know? So maybe then I called you. I don't know if I called you or he called you. I think um, maybe you brought, you brought it up to me. I can't believe we can't remember this. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I remember being in Baltimore and, and, and then he called me. He was like, and, um, and then we chatted a little bit, but I really can't remember if you gave me the heads up. I, you probably gave me the heads up that he was going to call, I would guess. Yeah. So, um, and then you came into town and um, we wrote three songs completely together. And I, I talked about this a couple episodes as well that ago um, that I, I remember two of them. I know we wrote Missing Victims and Molest Dead together, but I can't think of the other one. And I, I don't expect you to remember all the song titles or whatever, but there was one more that I can't think of which it was. Was it, was it Frozen at the Moment of Death? Or maybe no, we didn't do that one together. We did... I, I'm not gonna remember. Yeah. The, oh well. The oh well. But anyways, that dude. I. I. I those two, molest yeah. Dead and and Missing Victims. They have such a killer feel, you know. And, yeah. And, and I had fun. I so much fun. Doing I this. remember when we were writing those songs. I was like, okay, we're writing songs for Barnes, so they gotta be a little weird. They gotta maybe we gotta think like, you know, we gotta think like, Alex Webster, uh, weird kind of weird time signatures weird phrasing, you know, just some kind of weird shit. Barnes told me later, though, that he was pissed that we did that in the one song. That, <laughs> you know, he, he, he said, he, he, said he, he, cur he was cursing us, like, those motherfuckers, because he couldn't get it, the timing of it or something like that, or, you know, or whatever, you know, but or it, it was tough or something. But anyways, well, at that tough. time, we didn't, we didn't know that he would have trouble with the, the, the timing. Yeah, well, but it ended up being cool. Another thing that I think was awesome is that for that is that you recorded your drums after he laid down his vocals, which is a totally cool thing because you got to, you, I mean, oh, your, yeah. your, your actual performances, you know, not, not writing yeah. or the demos and stuff, but you're actually performing the actual performances you got to do after the vocals were in, which is a totally cool concept that not many people get to do. So you got to accent certain, certain vocals yeah. that he would say and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, that recording session was so sick. The drums on that album are the sickest out of anything I've ever done. I, I agree mean, that they're the bomb. Those are the hundred percent real fucking snare and real toms, and even though people will say like, "No, there's got to be a sample there," it's because I hit so consistently and so hard, and I know, I know when something has this a uh, twenty percent sample on it yeah. because my dynamics are what the the mixer thinks I would have done. Right. But I know exactly what my own dynamics are, right. especially on toms, you know. And we spent so much time at with you know Mark Lewis making sure that the toms I was like I want real toms cuz cuz it's just a thing you know everybody wants to put a little sample in there or a lot of sample or whatever and I'm like dude I want real fucking and I used the 12 14 18 mm, sick I can't even re yeah cuz you weren't there right no. you weren't there man it was so sick the I only thing that that I'm a little bummed about in the final thing is is that my splash cymbals are are too loud <laughs> really? I, yeah. I thought I definitely thought you were gonna say that the, you didn't think the kick drums were loud enough because I remember that was a big fight, you know. Where I, I, I have to say that I think they sit just right. I'm, I'm super happy with that entire production, yeah. the, the the entire thing. Um, but I remember you were you were upset about that. But I'm sure you wish they were loud on every record you're on, right? So. I I definitely wish that the kick drums were up a little bit, and and the splash cymbals like louder than the than my 18 inch or 20 inch China. Really? Like that just that just ain't right. Yeah, 
But um, well, hey, well, anybody that wants to let us know in the comments if you're bothered by that China being a little bit louder, let us know, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it needs to be loud. That needs to be the loudest thing. It's like an accent symbol. Remember? I love those splashes, <laughs> though, dude. Your splash <laughs> accents and the way it sounds. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I end every song on that record, I think, with a China hit. Really good. The signature. <laughs> I think so. Like, pop, pop or something you know with the snares i'll have to go back and listen for that yeah you should but go yeah. back and listen to it because i did i i was ending a lot of a lot i i think almost every song Ooh. with the china and the snare but just just kind of a accidental thing you didn't think about or were you purposely trying to do that no i wasn't purposefully trying to do that it just uh it happened you know i i, I started getting like really annoyed with songs that would end on one it just it just sounds super like generic and it just you know so when it was coming time to an end it just needed to be like um something different you know yeah like okay. so so i can't remember i mean i haven't even listened to that in, in so long but um should have listened to all those records before this thing man I, yeah yeah i know I, I, I start the start the cameras over i'll call you back in 30 seconds I'll listen to all the albums. I, I thought about I thought about this actually whether I should I didn't do any homework either. I thought that it'd be the most candid and natural though if we just jumped into it with no rehearsal whatsoever. I mean we didn't even, we didn't even discuss what we were going to talk about here anything like that. I just caught you uh, like hey Kev would you be interested in just chatting about the self title on yeah. Dead Record and then you replied with a bunch of um, home improvement photos that you've. Uh, <laughs> Uh, been working on lately. She's doing some flipper flop stuff, showing me uh, some ba bathrooms he just tiled and some kitchens he remodeled, stuff like that or whatever. So I'm like, okay, is that a yes or, uh, or yeah, okay, we can set something up. But yeah, I mean, we just jump right in. But yeah, it would have been fun to, to go back and listen to those to, to talk about them some more. But hey, you know, we'll do it afterwards, just as good. Yeah, you know, I'll listen to yeah. it after. I'm writing some notes down here. <laughs> okay, if you have anything, I can I can include some afterthoughts if you like. Um, you What's know, that third song? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, anyways, there's one on there. But I love all the tunes. I love this is one of the albums I'm most proud of. Yeah. Uh, of everything I've done. Love the record. Love love the experience. You know, we got to do some, do some tours together. Yeah. A couple uh, summer slaughter and a little European tour. Thinking back, that little European tour I thought was super fun. Like nine ten yeah. days over in like Germany and maybe went to like Belgium or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good times. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to jam again, man. And, um, you know, in, in whatever capacity, whether we, we do these tunes or, you know, like what, what? Whenever it gets freezing cold in Cleveland, you can come visit San Antonio. Yeah. We got plenty of houses for you to stay at. Hey, well, that's cool. <laughs> can I, I can get one just to myself. <laughs> well, it's been fun. I wanted to catch, just catch up with you. Um, that's really all I wanted to cover here. Um, just, you know, get a little perspective from the man himself. On, uh, on a couple records that, like I said, I'm, I'm most proud of and uh, ones that, that uh, I'm glad exist and hey, couldn't have done them without you, you know? <laughs> well, I'm excited, uh, yeah, about about doing some, some stuff in the future. We should, we should. Yeah, we I'm should, gonna, we I'm should. Gonna, I'm gonna guess that the in, majority in of people- In our spare time. Yeah, in our, exactly. But I'm gonna guess the majority <laughs> of the people watching this would be in favor of hearing some new material from us, so. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully we should we just make that happen. Should we just let people hear a little snippet of that song? Nah, it's gotta be done. It's gotta have vocals. It's gotta have. How about hold on? Okay, well, I'm gonna play a little snippet of it right now. Oh, what'd you think, man? That oh, was sick. Man. Oh. Yes, right. <laughs> that, that grind is so sick. People are going to love it, man. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, really appreciate the time, Kev. Appreciate you coming on the show, catching up and everything. We'll have to do it more often. Um, why don't you come back on tomorrow? Okay. Okay, perfect. Just kidding. All right. No, but no. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Glad you're doing so well. Keep it up. And we will definitely talk about this thing, uh, doing a little jamming here sometime soon. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> what are we going to call it? Honey Butter Chicken Biscuit. Honey Butter Chicken Biscuit? Give that a thumbs up in the comments if you like that name or suggest one yourself and we'll see.
All I'm, right. I'm really trying to push this right. these comments thing, see what people say, you know? Only when the opportunity right. comes up though, you know? Well, only only people that have Whataburgers are gonna know about honey butter chicken biscuit. That's what right. I, like I didn't know what it was. Place. I, I know what Whataburger is, but I had no idea what the reference was from or whatever. So, I'm, thank you for uh, for enlightening us. It's, it's the best. It's the best menu item. Oh yeah, you eating a lot of Whataburger these days? I've never had it. Yeah. Oh, there's this, there's um, a Monterey melt, Ooh. which is uh, I like the sound of it. You don't even have to describe it. I love the sound of it already. But go ahead and describe it. <laughs> I'll text you a picture of, of it every time I get one. I love I love anything that has like a name of like a uh, like a city or a town in it. Like uh, I haven't although I haven't had one of these in in probably ten or fifteen years. But the the Frisco melt from Steak and Shake, you know, it's like a, it's the San Francisco, but it's like you know got like a Russian dressing on a steak burger. Oh man, I could eat those all day. You know, toasted bread. So yeah, the a Malibu melt or what was it? Monterey melt. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Monterey, Mexico. We played there together. Remember those some fun yeah. times in Mexico? I got the Montezuma's Man. Revenge that trip. Yeah. That was crazy. Mexico City. That was. Do you remember that show at that, the Hard Rock yeah, Live? I do. Oh I do. And I tell people I think for that show that the crowd sang louder than Mark through a PA system. You know that, yeah. that night. And then remember Mark? Mark announced, "Man, the show was so sick. Anybody that wants to stick around for an autograph, we'll <laughs> we'll stay here." No one left. We can, you know, we go backstage, get changed, come back out, and it's still the same crowd. No one left. You know? Yeah. And so I think we're there. I could, I could hear the crowd, and I had in ears, and I was like, remember how far back I was? Nah. Um, I was super. It was like a corner stage or yeah, something. Yeah, something anyway, like that. Yeah. I was like, I was like 50 or 80 feet away from the crowd, and I could still hear them, uh, even having in ears in. No, but I, I think this has been fun, informative, yeah. entertaining, uh, just yeah. a walk down memory lane. Talking about some good stuff here with the famous, the infamous drummer, <laughs> drummer Kevin Talley. Yeah. Thanks, right, man. man. It's been super fun. Love you. See you next time. Okay, man. Later. All right. Well, that was a blast. It's always fun catching up with Kev. Um, we have such a good time together. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you stuck around this far, I appreciate it. Thank you to Kev, too, for taking the time to uh, come on with us here and let us know what he's been up to. Uh, and, and that's just going to wrap things up here uh, for episode nine. Wow, nine so far. So, but, um, you know, got to go through the usual drill here. Please follow me on the socials if you're not already. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, if you like this video, please show me by giving it a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And make sure you hit that notification bell so that you know when I'm, gonna, when I'm releasing future videos. Thanks to everybody who's been a part of all this thus far and has been helping me grow really appreciate that got so many more ideas in the pipeline finally please become a part of my patreon community it's a way to help get involved in these videos which really helps support me so i can get my music and videos out there to you guys quicker if you'd like to find out more about that you can at patreon.com slash rob arnold world i'm putting up new little guitar lessons up there all the time with classic camera tunes that you know and love so again check that out patreon.com slash rob arnold world i hope to see everybody on episode 10 of everything you love Love you. Thank you. Peace. What, what's, same as usual? Uh, yes. Nice okay. and short, though. Nice and short? Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. Favorite or most outrageous or whatever you can think of, first thing that comes to mind when I mention Kevin Talley. Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo, Japan. What happened in Tokyo? I just rolled that taxi cab driver to nuts. <laughs> Doing what? I wanted to kill him because he was filming him and he showed up to... He showed up to the, uh, what's it called? Uh, he showed up to the uh, lobby call. like. Oh, yeah. Lobby call was like 7 a.m. We're banging on his door and stuff yeah. like that. And, and he, just... wouldn't, he didn't show up. And I remember, there's like, dude, he's not up yet. You know what? The guy he, was, yeah. That Go guy ahead, wanted to kill him, though. Kevin would blow off interviews. He'd blow off lobby calls, all that. But the guy could hit some skins. I tell you what. Yeah.